It's been a while since I've taken a look at any sort of small, tiny PC. So when Intel was like, hey, you wanna check out one of our nooks? I was like, how good could it possibly be? Get amazing prices on the brands you love at Micro Center. Micro Center has over 30,000 items in stock, including desktops, laptops, computer components, monitors, TVs, and more. Not sure which parts to choose for your next build? Then use Micro Center's custom PC builder to find compatible parts, create your parts list, add them to your cart, and use same day pickup at one of Micro Center's 25 locations nationwide. And if you're not comfortable building it, one of Micro Center's professional builders can build it for you as fast as same day for a fee. And if you need ideas for a build, then head to Micro Center's Build Showcase for great build inspiration, or submit your build for others to see. To see everything that Micro Center has to offer, click the link in the description below. By the way, if I sound a little extra nasally, it's because of allergies and the wind's kicked up and it. it's all up here now. I feel like I need to itch my brain. Anyway, moving on. I don't normally talk about nooks and, I mean, I've looked at like the old beehive from like ASRock and then I took a look at um, some of the stuff from uh, Gaming's Forum. Some neat stuff. But it's been a while since I've looked at an Intel product. Now the reason why I was interested in this one is when Intel reached out for the kit, one of the reasons why it was like Nook is because it fit in like nooks and crannies. It's, it's always super little teeny tiny thing, like all in one, kind of a single PCB with like a small soldered GPU on there of some sort just to give you an image and a CPU slightly better than like a Raspberry Pi that you could use in small form factor, maybe a, connected to a TV or something to give you some sort of like streaming or whatever, right? But as TVs have gotten stronger and more in depth with their own built-in web OSs and you know, you know web OS for LG and you got Android TV for like Sony and that sort of stuff, it became less of a use case for that. So I, they kind of had no choice but to start beefing up the hardware that you would find in these nooks to the point where now a lot of people are actually using these types of computers as their daily driver for computers. Now the specs on this one that really got my attention, the reason why I was even willing to look, to look at it, is the fact that it's a 12th gen i7-12700H. So it's basically the same CPU you'd find in like a laptop. It's eight cores, 20 threads. But the other thing that I really caught my attention is the fact that it's running the Arc A770M. I remember we just took a look at the A770 and the A750 standalone discrete graphics cards, which were not amazing, but not terrible either. It, gives, it was just enough performance to give us some faith into the future of Intel's uh, GPU division. I can tell you that there is another Nook coming as well. So this one is already old news, but I can't help the fact that it arrived and then a day later they're like, hey, we got a new one. Then why don't you just send me that one? <laughs> I don't know if this is retail packaging or some sort of um, marketing packaging or not. So when we do these types of unbuilds, unbuilds, unboxings, you really, Okay. You have to take these packaging, these unboxings with a grain of salt because yours may or may not look like this. Oh, this is what was flopping around in there. It's just a, like a, like a Cobra sticker thing. So here is the form factor I was expecting it to be. Ooh, it's actually kind of weighty. Someone's obviously had their mitts on it before. Look at the fingerprints that are already all over it. That's not where I just grabbed it, by the way, because I'm still holding it how it was, and that's... Anyway, that's the form factor right there. What else is in here? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it has to be an external power supply, but still. A little driver dealy there. Very short power cable, because the brick obviously has its own link to it as well. <laughs> Infinite power! 330 watts, max draw. This should be able to just pull out of there. Yep. So if we take a look at the connectivity, on the front we have what appears to be uh, two USB 3, one's yellow and one's blue. We have our Thunderbolt port. We have a full-size SD card slot. And I'm not sure what the small jack is. It looks like 3.5 millimeter. Multi-jack probably? Check this out, four more USB 3.0, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, another Thunderbolt. We have our optical uh, HDMI, two display ports, our power adapter, and then a lot of ventilation. And then on the bottom, you can see right here, just like you would on the laptop, you've got some uh, intake fans. Ventilation around the entire exterior of the thing. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up because I want to know what size storage they went with in here. Well, when you open the top, this is what you get. Wait a minute. Is that a light panel? It shines through this. So you put this down in there, and then it shines through here. So you can choose the snake or the skull. 
can't get to the components down there. I'm sure I could if I continued digging, but I'm not gonna keep digging because of the fact that I want to keep this, uh, I don't, I don't wanna mess it up in some way because obviously then that would affect the review. So in terms of orientation with the stand, it can sit upright in the stand like this, which I think would be better for airflow reasons, obviously, or with these rubber feet, you could set it flat on a table. Um, but anyway, here's what we're gonna do. I have a 1440p panel, actually this is a 4K panel, but uh, it's an A770M, so it will not be running 4K today. I wanna to see if it can play Modern Warfare 2. I don't see any reason why it couldn't, because Modern Warfare 2 is not a very demanding title. Um, in fact, it is so underwhelming and it's demanding, I'm not entirely sure I wanna follow through with a video I was thinking about doing where we test Modern Warfare 2 with a bunch of different GPUs, because it's starting to look like if you have a potato, it'll run it. Not like Warzone. So you can see compared to a 32 inch monitor, it's pretty dang tiny. Anyway, let's go ahead and power it on. There we go. So you do have access to the BIOS here. So it's a 4.7 gigahertz uh, non-turbo frequency, 2.7. Uh, we have 16 gigabytes of memory installed. You even see the voltage regulators. I mean, this is the nice thing about it being an Intel-based like motherboard. Remember when Intel used to make motherboards that you could buy for your CPUs? Look, to be honest, I'm not gonna go over how all this works. I'm just surprised you have access to it on a small form factor like this. Because this is, like I said, the very same stuff you would find in a laptop, but you don't get this level of access in a laptop usually. I think it's because there's just a little better cooling because it's thicker in this here, which means probably a better heat sink in there. We can't go in here and play with the actual frequencies though, so that's not gonna happen. Let's get into Windows and start seeing what the temps look like, what the performance looks like, and if it can play Modern Warfare 2. Uh, you know, so it's funny, like, it's Windows 11 out of the box, as expected, and it, uh, it's pretty snappy. Like, I was downloading hardware monitor, I was unzipping it, I was downloading Steam, Steam was unpacking, you know, it was actually, oh, now we can hear the fans coming up. But still, they're not. It's quieter than a laptop would be, honestly. Okay, so let's talk about storage real quick. This particular one only has a 500 gigabyte SSD installed, uh, but I just wanted to point that out, that it's only a 500 gigabyte SSD in this. Also too, remember we talked about the fact that it's up to 64 gigs of, of RAM, there's only 16 in here. So the CPU is at 92C right now installing the driver and our package did peg at 100C already. Now it's kind of expected to see, and that's when it hit 93 watts. Um, the small form factor stuff, it's a downside of, of the nooks and everything being super tiny. Um, those temperatures, just like in laptops, you're, we saw that with our 12th gen laptops, they will hit their thermal limits. I mean, the score, it, it's gonna be okay, but remember, the boost clocks are not going as high as they would on a desktop 12700. They're not gonna stay up there as long when they do boost as a 12700 desktop. And the cooling solution on this is obviously quite small. So I'm just curious as to what the um, temperatures are gonna look like. So then the score will just be sort of secondary. 78, 85, package is at 95, by the way, 90, 94, 95 on the package, 93 on the cores. So 95 is our upper limit. You can see we spiked past that to 97 for a split second, but on temperatures here, every time it hits 95, we'll notice some slight reduction in cores here. Now we're running at 3.5 gig, 3.5 gigahertz per P core, 2.7 gigahertz to 2.6 gigahertz per E core. This little nook, even with this sort of limitation of it available to it when it comes to temperatures and power, because remember we also are limited to what, 70 watts of power here. Oh uh, yeah, we're at 70, 78 watts of package power. This is still gonna probably perform higher than a lot of folks. 15,063. 12700KF desktop. Remember the KF is just a non-IGP version of the 12700K. Is a 22,832. So as you can see, kind of like the NVIDIA uh, mobile graphics versus desktop graphics, even though the names are the same, they, they don't, they're not, equal on performance just because the name is the same. So if we scroll down to around a 15,000, we have a 15,034 here, that's 11,900K. <laughs> or 7960 x old school uh, extreme. Or just under a 5800X. Quite impressive, actually. It's barely slower than my 10900K, which I have at home. Now mine's overclocked, so that's not gonna be the case. Okay, that one's a 14783. So that definitely slowed down on the second run because of temperatures and stuff. That was a 15108. That's even higher than the first run. The 11900K is a 15034. So yeah, it's, it is on par with an 1100K desktop processor. In Cinebench anyway. So one more run, just to see if it, it's gonna be a pendulum swing of, of performance because of 
back-to-back -back hits. Now, looking at the boost clocks, I can tell you they drop about 200 megahertz from the start of the run after about five seconds. So if we were able to maintain the 3.8 that it goes to, or the 3.9 versus, well, now it's at 3.6, so that's 300 megahertz down. That'd be a pretty significant change to our score. But the, the problem here is our, is our package temperature at 95C. That is our, that's our limiter right there. 15229, it's going up. Now, you might be wondering why 1900K is higher than 1100K. Remember the 1100K, they took two cores and four threads off of it. There was no E-core, P-core then, it was just uh, P-core. And that was a 10-core, 20-thread CPU. And that's one of the reasons why I kept mine and didn't go to an 11th gen when it came out was because of the fact that they dropped it back down to an 8-core, 16-thread CPU. So that's why the 10900K performs higher than 11900K when it comes to multi-threading performance. But the 11900K had better IPC, which is better for gaming performance. So that's why there's that trade-off there. Uh, one more run, because I'm just curious now if it's going to go up again. A 16043. Ah, uh -uh, I ain't buying it. That now puts us higher, that puts us at higher than a 12800H. This is a 12700H. Well, if that 12800H was in a laptop. Oh yeah, you're right. If this score is legit, which I'm, I'm not 100% positive, 16043 puts it right behind a Threadripper 1950X. 13702. Okay, so back to back to back runs, obviously, there's some heat saturation there, but fluctuation all over the place because of the, the size of the cooler. And if you're gonna hit this over and over and over, it's gonna drop, drop, drop. So I need to let this cool off for just a sec here. Then we're gonna load up some Modern Warfare. So I let the game, I let Modern Warfare 2 do its own um, shader optimization based on the hardware. So it set things to, and we're at 1440. Quality is set to recommended. It's using Intel XESS. Oh, it went to high on everything. Train memory is max. Streaming quality, normal. Shader map, re shadow map resolution set to low though. Um, world motion blur is off. Film grain, okay. This is not, oh, 60 FPS. It's a little jittery looking though. But then again, 60 looks jittery to me because I've been used to playing at high refresh rates, but I'm gonna die. Yep, 47 is a little low. So let's go ahead now and see. Actually, no, let's go 1080. I think I'm asking a lot for 1440p on this, honestly. Doesn't look like it applied, did it? Does not look like 1080. My team is unfortunate to get me in here while I'm, you know, over here bench, not benching, but testing something like this. I'm not changing a whole lot on the FPS here. All kind of the same. Oop. See, I Playing at a weird angle like this with the glare, I cannot target acquire at all. Like I didn't see the red above his head or anything. Plus it's really dark. This monitor is very low brightness because of the camera. So that's why I suck. Shut up. Dude, our team, look at the, look at the score differential. 47 to 108. Because I'm on the team. That's why. Anyway, uh, near 60 FPS at 1080 with settings all around normal. The weird thing is the fact that it didn't seem to really change the FPS too much by lowering things or even the resolution. Um, that's probably just because XCSS you know, is doing its thing, but you can play. Would I have expected to play a title that just came out on a Nook PC? No, I wouldn't have. So this is actually quite impressive. Um, I guess it's just the right time for the A770M to exist because it's really coming out at the same time as the desktop gra graphics cards, and they're just a little bit more shaved down versions of those. So everything is, um, you know, I guess it really comes down to the price. Let me see <laughs> what it costs. So the model number for the exact one that I was sent is the uh, RNUC or RNUC 12SNK i7-2001. It's the uh, NUC 12 enthusiast kit which has a 1200, 1200H and A770M with 16 gigabytes of RAM, it is $1,500. So it definitely, you, you gotta really be looking for a Nook because you can build a heck of a desktop processor for 50, or a desktop tower for $1,500, which would outperform this in every way. So it, you really have to ask yourself, like, what is the use case where this would be what you choose? So that's for you to decide. In this video, the point of it was just showing you what is the performance like. At least there was a small subset of like R23, which is very difficult task to, uh, to run. And Modern Warfare at 1080p, normal settings, was getting us about 60 FPS. If you're happy with that, but you need a super small computer like this for some reason, then I guess that would be for you. I personally have no use for a Nook. So 
I, I look at this sort of objectively and subjectively where I go, yeah, it can do this, but that same amount of money could get you this. You could actually build quite a tower for $1,500 today, uh, especially with the availability of 30 series cards still all the way down to like a 3060 would just decimate this particular game and still be able to have all of the, you'd still be able to run an i7-12700 <laughs> with a with a basic motherboard and a tower and bigger SSDs and more RAM. So anyway, if you're looking for a Nook, the Intel Extreme Nook uh, offers some pretty compelling performance. If this is the exact size and form factor that you need for whatever your use case is. In fact, this is where I need you. I really need you to comment down below. If you're looking at this going, I need that or I want that, what exactly do you want it for? What are you gonna use it for? I still, I, I, they obviously sell enough of these to continue making them and making them in a ton of different trims. So I'm just curious, when you could buy a laptop that probably has very, fairly similar specs, a little bit lesser probably, for the same price and you get a screen with that and it's mobile, what would make you choose a Nook over a, a laptop or a desktop build? Even a small form factor desktop build. Anyway, sound off in the comments below guys. Thanks for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next one.